Also, the area and or the program of interest. Have one series for each one. Doing a drip method campaign to all your students, regardless if they're interested in program A, B, C, groundwork, stand up, just want to be in fitness, whatever, is not going to do anything for you. All right? Oh, I'll just rotate them. No, it's not going to happen. Have one series dedicated for each program. You will see more success. Also, age. You can pretty much use the same templates that are above, you know, based on experience and program of interest, but just make a couple adjustments, tweak it a little bit, so that there's a child that's obviously addressing the parents. Youth, we're talking to a different group who speaks a different language. Maybe work with your youth so that you can use terminology that they'll be responsive to. And of course, adults. Your outbound messages, okay, so I'm going to give you a couple examples of what you can plug into those series of campaigns. Interesting articles, videos, or a series of photos. People really like to read something interesting. Most likely, they, they want to watch a video, and they like to look at photos. So you can have you know, little email, just, just automated letters that go out that have something like this. Hey, what's going on at so-and-so school? Or here's a video from our last tournament. Or here's a series of photos from a whatever event. Or here's an article on the benefit of X, Y, and Z. Or did you know about this? Just some kind of interesting content. As you know, consumers right now are content crazy. They consume it. They love it. So give it to them. Also, changes happening to people in your area. I like saying this in an email subject line. Changes happening to people in your area. Who? I open it up. Feature a case study of a student most similar to that target list and their success story. You can directly copy and paste this from that uh, What People Are Saying Us page we talked about on an earlier slide. So fire that up. That could be your second one or your third one, but mix it up, right? Personal style check-ins. Once in a while, there's nothing wrong with just a, hey, John, it's uh, Sensei so-and-so from, from, from uh, this school, and I'm just curious to know how you're doing. That's it. Be surprised. They might write back, I'm doing well. From there, you start a conversation. Um, okay, invites to special events. Anytime you're doing something that you think is kind of cool, there's going to be a lot of people at, it's, it's generating some interest, invite them to it. Who knows? They might show up or they might even ask about it or they might go, man, I've been meaning to train at your school and, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't make it down that one time. Good luck with that event. And then now you have a reason to follow up with them on the phone. Do it bi-weekly or monthly depending on how much interest content you can put together for, the, for that target. If you have a lot of content you can put together, do it bi-weekly. If you don't, monthly is just fine. Be sure. Okay, everything we just talked about, 100,000% useless if we are not sure we respond to any of their responses to these emails ASAP. Also, the reply you send or your staff sends must be logged. You have to store what you wrote back because who knows if that's the end of this wave of communication and you have to wait another month or two until the next one. And when that happens, you better know what was said earlier because you're going to sound so much more into it when you know what you said before or what someone else said. All right? So make sure you track everything you communicate and everything they communicate. Okay. I'm going to go through this really quickly because, it's again, it's not a social media webinar, but you have to also add them on Facebook. Just add them as a friend. Okay? This does not mean you're going to start sending these same messages to their Facebook inbox. Don't do that. That's just going to piss them off. Facebook is already loaded with people promoting things that nobody wants. Don't be one of them. Marketing on Facebook, it's an inbound practice. They see status updates or they see you post up a photo or a video, something that interests them. And then the rest just happens like a normal conversation would. Hey, that's cool. And then from there, see where it goes. They may notice mutual friends interacting with you. That might lead into a conversation about you between them. That's great. Um, blogs and Twitter, they definitely play a different role. But again, this is not, not a social media webinar. I've got to plug my partner, uh, Sensei Nick. If you want to learn more about that, just talk to him. Okay, lastly on managing the long-term leads. Don't be scared of the phone guys. Phone calls are not out of the question. You actually should do more of them now to be effective since everybody else has gone digital, right? If everybody's sending emails and everybody's sending texts and everybody's doing social media, once in a while, just reaching out and leaving a voicemail or actually getting a hold of them on the phone will really make an impact. Why would you call them? I would say on their birthday, okay? Yes, our company invented the birthday e-card to the martial arts industry about eight years ago, but if you call them on their birthday, you're going to have a much better response on milestone dates since the first contact. So here's an example. It's been exactly six months since the first time we talked. Hey, just curious what you've been up to. This is great for enticing the procrastinators. A lot of people don't realize how fast time goes by. And if I haven't talked to you in six months and you came down to the school, it's a cool call. Hey, 
How you doing, man? It's John uh, calling from Champions. I just want to let you know, exactly six months ago today was the first time we met. I'm just curious, hey, what have you been up to? See what happens when you make that type of call. Also, whenever you, you've had major changes to the school, so a new program is being offered or there's renovations, it's another reason that you can reach out and call and just let them know, hey, I just want to let you know we're doing this now, or we just built a cage, or we actually just completely renovated the school. You should come down and check it out. We're doing a little launch party this Saturday. Also, when you notice they have opened several of your emails consecutively, if they've opened three in a row, hey, give them a shout. Just check in, see how they're doing. And then lastly, if you have any special events that are specific to their interests, so you're doing a seminar on something, invite them to come down and watch. Please log all the details of every call made, regardless of the outcome of the phone call. Voicemails count. Why? Because two months later, when you're looking at them, you're like, huh, did I call that guy or not? Well, I did leave a message. That will also help you understand what time of day to call them. It, there's so many clues involved. So log every detail of every call. Okay. Managing the long-term leads, uh, my final note on this is these phone calls will rarely happen if A, you don't track correspondence from before. Again, we are much less likely to call a name we have no memory of. Also, they will never happen if we never store the information to start with. I think that's pretty straightforward. If you want to delegate this, it's really simple. Increase the pay for the leads that show up to appointments that are from your long-term pipeline and watch what happens. So let's say you've got someone that you're paying X amount of dollars a month. You give them a base that's a little bit lower than that, and then you bring them back up with commission per lead that they book for an intro that shows up. Awesome. Take that same pay per lead that's the new ones, you know, within the first uh, month of, of contact. Take that, add maybe an extra 25 or 50% to it, and say, if you can book anybody from this list and they come in, I'll pay you this. That way, they go through the ones that you don't want to go through. What happens if they book an appointment? Follow your short-term lead pipeline process again. What I'm saying is, if you book that long-term pipeline lead for an appointment, just treat them like a short-term one again. We've just recycled the whole situation. We've gone full circle. So all you do is just put them right to the top of the pipeline again. That's it. Okay. Last step. Using a system and sticking to it hourly. Hourly, hourly, hourly. Every hour, there needs to be an entry in the system. It just should. There's so much going on at your school. There's so many leads that are either contacting you or you're contacting them. So don't do this daily. You'll lose important information. You might as well not do it at all. It's completely impossible to do this without a software program. 100% impossible. We know this. I already kind of went over this, all right? But if you don't do it hourly, this software that you're paying for will become a Rolodex at best. To those who say, okay, and this is a statement that I hear a lot, I don't like using a computer, please go find yourself a hot tub time machine. The days of managing a business without optimizing your operation with a computer ended many years ago. All right? People will say, you know, I just want to be on the mat. I don't want to be, be behind a keyboard. That's great. You'll be on a mat with no students. Make sure the system you use can do everything we just covered. All those steps, all those things, all those automation, all those emails, every single thing we just talked about, storing the data in a simple process, it has to be able to do everything. Okay, I'm going to take a deep breath here because why? Um, it's time for the shameless product pu uh, push, okay? So in three minutes or less, I'm going to quickly show you Perfect Mind and how it does all these things. Here we go. Making sure all the roads are paved. Right here, every time you generate a lead, you see that little circle there? We can say where it came from. It's simple. You just pick that, save. When you do that, you have a report. See that? It tells you in a little pie chart there. Here's your contact channels. Where are they coming from? It just, it's simple. You need to know if you're not getting anybody through a particular contact channel, there's something wrong. Take a look. Rating your leads. See, I circled it down there. I, I use cold, hot, and warm. That's our stock rating. You can change it if you want, but it works, right? They're hot, they're cold, they're warm. If you want to know why, you look at the logs. Here's the logs. Okay, uh, it's a little bit squishy, but Claire called in. She's very interested. That's why she's hot. If you read the notes, you'll know why she's hot. Logs. We talked about keeping everything in one place, and it has to be easy. So anytime you talk to someone, anytime you call someone, anytime you email someone, all you do is you say what type of log it is. The subject is a quick summary, so that way you don't have to read all the notes all the time. And then the description is the detailed stuff. That's it. It's really easy to use. Remember we said, do not guess. It's a pitfall. Well, you don't have to guess with Perfect Mind. All you do is when you're entering a new lead, see us kind of circled back there, campaign source. When you click on it, it says, how did you generate them? Just pick the one that they generated. That's it. 
When you do that, guess 